If I ask you to picture the most controversial film you know, what would you pick? The Human Centipede? Lolita? What if I told you that there was a film that was so controversial that it forced its director to leave their country? Peter Watkins was an English filmmaker who made a name for himself as a pioneer in the docudrama genre of filmmaking, constantly trying to push the boundaries of what can be done. This could be the way the last two minutes of peace in Britain would look. The film that put him on the map was Culloden, a film that asks, what if there was a modern day television crew documenting a war that took place in 1745? You must understand, without putting too fine a point on it, that the army here is in a total shambles. But it was his next film that really got people to take notice. Allow me to set the scene. It's 1965 and the Cold War is getting hot. Britain had tested its first nuclear warhead just eight years prior, joining the US and Soviet Union as the only three nations with nuclear weapons. On the flip side, the campaign for nuclear disarmament was formed that same year a huge movement calling for the removal of nuclear weapons in Britain and across the globe. It's safe to say tensions were high. They have 10 nuclear submarines armed with Poseidon missiles and seven nuclear weapons stores hidden in the British countryside. Amongst all of this, the BBC wanted to make a documentary to reassure the public that in the event of a nuclear attack, there would be a plan set in place to ensure the safety of the British public. Enter Peter Watkins. The head of documentaries at the time, Hugh Weldon, saw Culloden and the potential of Watkins and brought him on board to make the documentary. What Watkins went on to make was anything but reassuring. Twelve seconds later, the shock front arrives. The war game does not hold back in showing the horrors of nuclear war. Cities reduced to rubble, homes and lives destroyed, complete and utter destruction, hitherto unseen before in history. The general plot of the film tells what the government plan would be in the event of nuclear war, evacuations, rationing, and so on. But what the film also achieves is showing just how unprepared Britain, and any other nation for that matter, would be if such a thing were to happen. I had a little boy with me. He had his legs burned off. There is no surviving a nuclear war. After the film was finished, Weldon was concerned that it was too graphic and upsetting, and after Watkins refused to water it down, he took it to the higher-ups at the BBC. They put the final nail in the coffin, claiming it was unfit for television broadcast because of the concerns of what effect it would have on the lonely, the aged, and the depressed or disturbed. And with that, the film was banned from being broadcast or so they would have you believe. The war game. When the then Director General of the BBC, Sir Hugh Green, saw it, he decided that its scenes of nuclear devastation followed by a complete breakdown of society were too shocking and disturbing to transmit. Since then, the film has been shown in private cinemas and clubs here and abroad, and is estimated to have been seen by some six million people. See, the chairman of the BBC at the time Lord Normanbrook was one of the people to have the final say over the movie. Now, this is important because before he worked for the BBC, Normanbrook was cabinet secretary. To those not familiar with the confusing inner workings of the British Parliament, he was the senior advisor to the Prime Minister. Not only that, he was also a key figure in Britain's Cold War strategy. Some pretty serious stuff. After Normanbrook saw the documentary, he was concerned because it showed the government to be completely inept to handle the effects of nuclear war. And so, rather than being exposed by this film, sought out to ban it instead. Interesting, considering the BBC is a self-proclaimed apolitical organisation. And so, using the concerns of the depressed or disturbed as a shield, Norman Brooke had a perfect excuse to get his way. It was for editorial reasons, not political promise. Luckily, the film did have a limited release at the BFI in 1966, and actually went on to win the Oscar for Best Documentary Feature. But despite that, Watkins resigned from the BBC in protest. The meddling from producers and the government alike was too much, and he knew that if he were to stay, all his further films would be similarly scrutinised 
and his creative vision would be compromised. And so, he was forced to leave the country in the hope that he would be free to make the kind of films he wanted without any interference. If only it was so simple. Thank you.